Righteousness is not that you turn your faces toward the east or the west, but true righteousness is in one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the book, and the prophets, and gives wealth, in spite of love for it, to relatives, orphans, the needy, the traveler, those who ask for help and for freeing slaves, and who establishes prayer and gives zakah, those who fulfill their promise when they promise, and those who are patient in poverty and hardship and during battle. Those are the ones who have been true, and it is those who are the righteous. And if you fear that you will not deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry those that please you of other women, two or three or four. But if you fear that you will not be just, then marry only one or those your right hands possess. That is more suitable that you may not incline to injustice. And also prohibited to you are all married women except those your right hands possess. This is the decree of Allah upon you. And lawful to you are all others beyond these, provided that you seek them in marriage with gifts from your property, desiring chastity, not unlawful sexual intercourse. So for whatever you enjoy of marriage from them, give them their due compensation as an obligation. And there is no blame upon you for what you have mutually agreed to beyond the obligation. Indeed, Allah is ever-knowing and wise. And whoever among you cannot find the means to marry free, believing women, then he may marry from those whom your right hands possess of believing slave girls. And Allah is most knowing about your faith. You believers are of one another. So marry them with the permission of their people and give them their due compensation according to what is reasonable. They should be chaste, neither of those who commit unlawful intercourse randomly, nor those who take secret lovers. But once they are sheltered in marriage, if they should commit adultery, then for them is half the punishment for free unmarried women. This allowance is for him among you who fears sin, but to be patient is better for you, and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Worship Allah and associate nothing with him, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, the needy, the near neighbor, the neighbor farther away, the companion at your side, the traveler, and those whom your right hands possess. Indeed, Allah does not like those who are self-deluding and boastful. And never is it for a believer to kill a believer except by mistake. And whoever kills a believer by mistake then the freeing of a believing slave and a compensation payment presented to the deceased's family is required, unless they give up their right as charity. But if the deceased was from a people at war with you and he was a believer, then only the freeing of a believing slave. And if he was from a people with whom you have a treaty, then a compensation payment presented to his family and the freeing of a believing slave. And whoever does not find one or cannot afford to buy one, then instead, a fast for two months consecutively, seeking acceptance of repentance from Allah. And Allah is ever-knowing and wise. Allah will not impose blame upon you for what is meaningless in your oaths, but he will impose blame upon you for breaking what you intended of oaths. So its expiation is the feeding of ten needy people, from the average of that which you feed your own families, or clothe them, or the freeing of a slave. But whoever cannot find or afford it, then a fast of three days is required. That is the expiation for oaths when you have sworn. But guard your oaths. Thus does Allah make clear to you his verses, that you might be grateful. It is not for a prophet to have captives of war until he inflicts a massacre upon Allah's enemies in the land. Some Muslims desire the commodities of this world, but Allah desires for you the hereafter, and Allah is exalted in might and wise. 
Zakah expenditures are only for the poor and for the needy, and for those employed to collect Zakah, and for bringing hearts together for Islam, and for freeing captives or slaves, and for those in debt, and for the cause of Allah, and for the stranded traveler, an obligation imposed by Allah, and Allah is knowing and wise. And Allah has favored some of you over others in provision. But those who were favored would not hand over their provision to those whom their right hands possess, so they would be equal to them therein. Then is it the favor of Allah they reject? Except from their wives or those their right hands possess, for indeed they will not be blamed. And tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts and not display their adornment except that which ordinarily appears thereof and to draw their head covers over their chests and not display their adornment except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' sons, their brothers, their brothers' sons, their sisters' sons, their women, that which their right hands possess, or those male attendants having no physical desire, or children who are not yet aware of the private aspects of women. And let them not stamp their feet to make known what they conceal of their adornment. And turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, that you might succeed. But let them who find not the means for marriage abstain from sexual relations until Allah enriches them from his bounty. And those who seek a contract for eventual emancipation from among whom your right hands possess, then make a contract with them if you know there is within them goodness, and give them from the wealth of Allah which he has given you. And do not compel your slave girls to prostitution if they desire chastity, to seek thereby the temporary interests of worldly life. And if someone should compel them, then indeed Allah is to them, after their compulsion, forgiving and merciful. O you who have believed, let those whom your right hands possess and those who have not yet reached puberty among you ask permission of you before entering at three times, before the dawn prayer and when you put aside your clothing for rest at noon and after the night prayer. These are three times of privacy for you. There is no blame upon you nor upon them beyond these periods, for they habitually circulate among you, some of you among others. Thus does Allah make clear to you the verses, and Allah is knowing and wise. He presents to you an example from yourselves. Do you have among those whom your right hands possess any partners in what we have provided for you? so that you are equal therein and would fear them as you fear of one another within a partnership? Thus do we detail the verses for a people who use reason. O Prophet, indeed we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have given their due compensation and those your right hand possesses from what Allah has returned to you of captives and the daughters of your paternal uncles and the daughters of your paternal aunts and the daughters of your maternal uncles, and the daughters of your maternal aunts who emigrated with you, and a believing woman if she gives herself to the Prophet, and if the Prophet wishes to marry her. This is only for you, excluding the other believers. We certainly know what we have made obligatory upon them concerning their wives and those their right hands possess. But this is for you, in order that there will be upon you no discomfort. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Lawful to you, O Muhammad, are any additional women after this, nor is it for you to exchange them for other wives, even if their beauty were to please you, except what your right hand possesses. And ever is Allah over all things an observer. There is no blame upon women concerning their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their brothers' sons or their sisters' sons or their women or those their right hands possess. And fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is ever over all things witness. So when you meet those who disbelieve in battle, 
strike their necks until, when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, then secure their bonds, and either confer favor afterwards, or ransom them until the war lays down its burdens. That is the command. And if Allah had willed, he could have taken vengeance upon them himself. But he ordered armed struggle to test some of you by means of others. And those who are killed in the cause of Allah, never will he waste their deeds. Except from their wives or those their right hands possess, for indeed they are not to be blamed. <laughs>